Hey, what's going on DDO players? Axel here. So today I'm going to give you my review of DDO's newest adventure pack, which is called Hunter and Hunted. It was released on February 24th, 2022. The new adventure pack contains two quests, one raid, and a new public area that is accessible through the hut from beyond in the harbor. The quests are level 32 legendary and seven heroic, except for the raid, which is legendary only. There's no heroic version of the raid, of course. The story of this pack revolves around a series of challenges we've been invited to partake in by the Master of the Hunt, and we eventually faced off against this Master of the Hunt in the raid. The pack's story, it does take place in the Feywild, but you don't need the Feywild expansion in order to play it. Okay, so let's talk about the two quests. So the first quest is called One Dame Thing After Another. In this quest, you are helping Dame Alonza and you need to help her in her hunt for the Huntsman's Hound. And if you remember Dame Alonza, this is the same NPC from the quest A Knight Who Cried Windmill from the Feywild expansion. It's the same crazy kind of old lady. There's not a lot to say about the quest. It's short and very linear. There's a section where you need to find two crests, open uh, a door area, not something we've seen many, many, many times. There's an optional, easy, very short, very easy Mario section you find a unicorn if you want to do it it's not required but it is a option if you would like to the one positive thing i will say about this quest and really the next quest too is that the backgrounds are very pretty and i think that's the best part of this pack it, it is quite pretty so you've got a lot of you got very fey wildy backgrounds with overgrown mushrooms and and things like that in them and it looks quite good uh, but this quest overall it's uh very forgettable it, it feels like plenty of other quests we've had uh, throughout the game. There's nothing really new here. It's really linear and straightforward. Just not a lot to say. The second quest, there is a lot more to say. It's called Through the Tolgi Wood. So the story in this second quest revolves around a hunt for Hermia. So Hermia is Hearsome's sidekick in, of sorts. So that's her, uh, Hermia is Hearsome's Al and you've uh, if you remember here some he's the main villain from the Feywild expansion you've seen him in quests like Immortality Lessons and the Dryden the Demigod raid and what you're trying to do here is hunt down the Al Hermia and actually save her so you want to hunt her down to, to save her before the other hunters presumably hunt her down and kill her so this is a somewhat long quest and it's has it is quite unique. I, there's nothing in the game quite like it. It's essentially one big lever puzzle. So in this quest, there's 11 different levers that are spread out throughout the map, and they all open different doors in different areas of the map. So you're what you have to do in this quest is you have to find the first lever. The first lever you pull is going to open a previously unaccessible door, and you need to find which door the first lever opens. In that door, you'll find another lever that opens a different door, and the, it proceeds like that. So essentially, it's a lever puzzle where you need to find out what lever opened what door, find that door, and open the next lever so you can open the next area and proceed with the quest until you have finally ex accessed all 11 levers and, and get to the end fight. So uh, it, it's a quest that you need you the first time through it you're going to backtrack a bit if you don't have a map or some kind of guide because you need to figure out what door open what lever opens what door and there is some help on the map so there is a, a kind of an o indicator on the uh, in-game map that indicates when a new door is open so that helps somewhat but what i ended up doing is just drawing a map for this quest so here's the map i drew actually on pen and paper so that i can have a really quick and easy guide for subsequent runs which i've run this quest uh three or four times at this point i think three times um, but uh, it's a quest that uh, you, it's not a straightforward like hack and slash quest like we we see in so many other areas of game and, and like we saw in the first quest uh, in this adventure pack you actually need to think a little bit uh, look at the map and direct yourself around and with some experience I can imagine some players will just memorize this but if you don't play this quest a lot you'll probably want to have a map as a guide or create your own map just so you don't waste a lot of time by backtracking that said you can do it without a map I mean the first time through I did this blind without a map I didn't draw a map until my second run of the second or thing it was my second or third run of the quest uh, I didn't draw the map until then so you can certainly do it without it and there are some indicators on the map as I said to help you along the way so it's it's believe me it's not overly cryptic or confusing it's just a matter of finding what door open from the lever you pulled there's one 
section with a cow. The 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 dialogue there is kind of humor, pretty humorous with the cow. If you've seen it, you'll know what I talk about. There's a really a puzzle that's quite straightforward. It's a light puzzle where you need to unlight all of the circles. Overall, I appreciate the devs for taking something we've seen many times in the game, metal levers, opening doors, and mixing it up a little bit, giving us something a little different. But I can't say that I was like overly captivated by that mechanic. I thought it was fine, and it plays a lot like a kind of like an old school dungeon crawler where you need to write down, like I said, you need to write down a map. But it's uh, it's something that I enjoyed. I don't think a lot of player players will enjoy, but even me, I need to be in a specific mood to really enjoy that kind of quest or that kind of game. But uh, yeah, it's fine. I, I don't really have too many complaints about this quest, but personally, I think that most players aren't going to like it just because. If you don't have a map or you, you aren't experienced in the quest, it can be frustrating your first time through just trying to figure out where to go because there is going to be backtracking involved. All right, so lastly, let's talk about the raid, which is called Hunt or Be Hunted. So in this raid, you take on the master of the hunt and his challenges. The first thing to say about the raid, it's very, very short. It's like a five-minute raid. It tops it probably, I don't know if technically this is the shortest raid in the game, but it I would say it probably is. Uh, especially if you don't do the optionals. I, it, it's uh, There's other sh really short raids like Mark of Death. I would say this probably beats it. Someone let me know if you know the exact timing, but it's a, it's got to be the probably the shortest raid in the game. So in the raid, it's a very small map. There's a, central, a small central room, and there's two optionals, one to the left and one to the right. If you choose to do the optionals, you get an extra chest, which does drop name loot. So on the left, the left option on the left side, there is... It's very straightforward. There's a trap room and some mobs to kill. So you'll want to have some trappers for this raid. For the optional on the right, it's a, it's, there's more to say. So on the optional on the right, there's a maze. And it's a maze where you need to look for and find and defeat a red named Pixie who constantly teleports in different areas of the maze. So you might go and find her in one spot, beat her down a bit. She'll teleport somewhere else in the maze. You'll need to go and find her in that section of the maze as well. And you have a, uh, you are forced to find her quickly because what goes on on the right side of the map in this, uh, this optional is there's a cold damage over time effect that will constantly hurt you and it builds over time. So the longer you go without finding her, the more damage you're going to take and the party's going to get wiped if you don't uh, find her. So you need to find her quickly so you don't take too much damage. And once you find her, it will, re will refresh the dot and, and take it off you. Um, so you need to find her fast and get through the maze. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool mechanic there. I think it's interesting. The main thing to know about the raid is the infight mechanic. So in the infight, there are these ghosts, which look like transparent humanoid NPCs, and they have numbers on top of their heads. And these numbers count down from 10 to zero. And bef before the numbers get to zero, at least one party member must go stand beside them in order to, to stop the countdown. If the countdown gets to zero before someone can go stand beside them, it releases massive AOE damage that will wipe the party. Even on normal, it's massive damage. So in this raid, coordination is more important than character power. And the stand beside the ghosts with numbers on top of their heads mechanic is the by far the most important thing to understand about the raid. And uh, I will say, though, I've only run the raid three times at this point, so I don't fully understand the mechanics yet and optimal strategies. Um, I think the mechanic itself, though, from what, I, what I've experienced so far, is fine. It's, it's different. It's creative. It's not something we haven't seen before. I will say that. And uh, it really creates a situation where... I think guilds are gonna guilds in any close knit group of people are probably gonna find the the raid really smooth. Like once you've got the mechanics down and everyone in your your group is on point, you're gonna be fine. But I think pugs in particular may find it frustrating since there is such a big emphasis on being coordinated and knowing the mechanics. Like it's a lot, it's much more important to know the 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 mechanics of the raid than to have like super uber powerful characters coordination and understanding the mechanic is the key part of this raid so i think pugs you know you may have a pug situation where no one knows each other where you may have you know two people who don't speak english you may have four people who aren't really listening to voice chat it's it can be a situation where it's gonna it's gonna be harder to pug out so that might change. Maybe the population of the game will really start to understand the mechanics, and maybe we'll. Uh, and I, we still need to wait until we can 
understand the raid so we can get more optimized mechanics and maybe we'll find some really easy like optimized way to run the raid that will make all this trivial but as of right now it seems like kind of a hard rate pug to raid just because it is so punishing for not understanding the mechanics so people people really need to know the raid understand how it works and you need to have a a raid leader who actually can explain these things so people are on point and actually looking for uh, these ghosts at the end fight. And at the same time, you also need people to be DPSing the, the boss, the master of the hunt. So let's talk about the pack overall. Honestly, overall, I think it's a below average adventure pack. I found, found it to be a little bit over underwhelming just because, uh, and the main problem the pack has is there's just so little content here. There's so little play time. That said, they, that is reflected a bit in the price. According to the DDO wiki, it's 595 DDO points to buy the pack. So it is on the cheaper side. That said, there are a lot of adventure packs that were priced a lot cheaper that have more content, you know, but whatever. Uh, I can't criticize too much on that regard just because this is a pack that probably if they if they do something like the Peril of the Planner Eyes, they may end up giving this out free in a future free coupon a year or two down the line. But uh, and when you look at the pack and what it offers, you got one short shorter forgettable quest you've got in uh da another damn thing and then, and then when you get to tolgi wood you've got a quest that it's okay i think it's fine i personally enjoy it when i'm in the mood for that kind of quest kind of a more old school dungeon crawler quest but i think most people will find it more laborious and um unfun and, and kind of just more of a headache than to actually be engaging I don't see that being a popular quest with the community. Maybe the DDO wiki or people out there will get a well-known, really good looking digital map that people can follow uh, quick to, to get through the quest uh, in a way that they don't have to backtrack as much. The Then you have the shortest raid in the game, which I like the mechanics. I think they're fine. They're interesting. They're different. Can't really complain about the mechanics. Just more the length, if anything, is the main complaint about the raid. But the raid itself is one that I don't, think will be too popular we'll see what happens but i don't think it'll be too popular pugging just because it is a uh, it is one that punishes you a lot for not understanding the mechanics but uh yeah i mean my main complaint about the the, the pack is just there's just so little content here there's not really anything new so you're not missing out uh if if you're if you decide not to buy the pack you're not missing out on anything like there's no new mobs as far as i can remember there's some i believe there's some cosmetic alterations to mobs like the the wolf at the end of one dame thing for example and in the raids uh and in the raid there isn't much of a story as far as the story goes there's not much of a story just because there's so little content to actually tell a story in in the Feywild uh, story itself, there are some amusing parts, like there's a cow in the light puzzle in uh, Tolgi Wood that made me chuckle a little bit. A lot of the riddles, say like the encounter with the Bullywugs, also in Tolgi Wood, I didn't really understand what they were hinting at. And there's a Mad Hatter encounter. I didn't really understand quite what they were getting at with some of the dialogue there. Maybe that's just me not understanding it, or or maybe that's... Uh, the Feywild, I know itself, is supposed to be purposely confusing from the storyline perspective because they, the the inhabitants speak in riddles and such. So, but still, I, I don't know. I I didn't really feel like the the storyline was there's really much to offer, much being offered there that I found engaging or interesting to read. Um, on the positives, it is a pretty pack, as pretty much all new content they've released looks really good. The landscapes for the Feywild Forest. Again, I've mentioned that before, but they do look really, really pretty. But uh, I have to say that I would advise looking at the loot list here. And if there's stuff you want for your characters, then maybe buy it. But if there's nothing you want, I can't say it's essential. Like I wanna, I want people to support the game. But if I think the pack is below average, I'm not gonna like lie to you guys and say I think it's a great pack because I just don't think it is. I think it's a below average adventure pack that was done really quickly. That uh, as a result isn't really essential except if you want it for for loot purposes so yeah guys that's uh all i have to say let me know what you think about the adventure pack below if you agree or disagree with me maybe you have a more positive take on it but uh that's gonna be it for this video see you all next time have a good one take care